It's no secret that I'm not very fond of working on the computer. I like to be out there with a the camera taking pictures. But the upside is I can sit here in my own home with a mug of coffee in my hand and do whatever I want with my pictures and make them look exactly the way I want. Now, there are two sides to post-production as I see it. You've got processing, which is the very basic tweaking of your original image to get the very best from it. For example, suppose you've been photographing at a wedding. The bride's out in the garden uh, under, under an overcast sky. Her dress is going to be a bit blue. If she goes indoors under tungsten, it's going to go a bit yellow. If she goes and stands under a tree back in the garden again, it'll go a bit green. Now, the bride isn't going to like her dress changing colour. <clears throat> so you need to adjust white balances. I find it easier to do that in post-production. Also, making sure you don't get a bright one and then a dark one and then a dull one. You can just tweak these little things a bit to make sure your pictures are all nice and consistent. The other thing is image manipulation. This is adding things, taking things away. Now, I'm not really into that particularly. I've only really only done it once. I'm going to show you what it was. Now... <clears throat> This was a shot I took at Bournemouth Airport. The brief was to get an eye-catching shot that says Concord lands here. Airports are kind of messy places, sheds, trucks, stuff lying around. So I went for the classic lying under the droopy snout shot <clears throat> and photographed upwards. As you can see, it really is a little bit dull, isn't it? So I brought it home and I shoved it into the computer and I fiddled about. <laughs> I came up with this. As you can see, I've added a girl to the steps. I've added sun coming over the edge of the fuselage. I've got lens flare going boo, 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 off across the fuselage in this ridiculous purple sky. Jane hates this picture. I kind of liked it when I first did it. It looks a bit dated now, but nonetheless, it won awards from Fuji and the Master Photographers Association and other places. I actually went off to Cyprus on the back of that shot, but that's a different story. So let's look at some of the different softwares that are available for you to work your images. Well. Let's start right at the beginning. You've got free software such as GIMP. You can download it for nothing and it will do pretty much anything you need to do up to enthusiast level. If I just throw a picture in there quickly. <clears throat> Here we go. This is one I took on holiday. Now, for example, let's just move this a bit. You know, you can do the usual stuff. You can brighten up your pictures. You know, you can sort of, there you go. You can see it going in. You can up the contrast. I'm just sort of going a bit mad. You know, you can adjust things with it it's great up to, I would say, enthusiast level, and because it's free of charge, why not? If you're into shooting RAW files, then it's a good idea to get yourself a dedicated RAW file processor. Now, your camera probably comes with a piece of software for converting RAWs, <clears throat> and they're usually pretty good, but I have to say, to my mind, Adobe Lightroom is probably one of the absolute best programs I've ever come across. A raw file is a recipe for an image file. You need to go and watch the raw file film if you're not quite sure what I'm talking about. But for example, in a raw file, here's a picture of Lorna here. If I want to correct that, you can see she's a bit yellow. I can just go in there, pick up an eyedropper, click it on something white, and there you go. She's changed colour. Let me reset it. There you go. Do you see what I mean? You see how that's changing colour? Post-production, I can tweak things, change them around, and then batch process out into JPEGs using... Adobe Lightroom as a RAW processor. I would have to say the absolute king of the mountain has to be Adobe Photoshop, which is what I created my Concord picture in. You can do anything with it. It really, really is the giant. It is the industry standard. Uh, costing at about £650, it's probably quite pricey. If that's rather too much for your budget, for around the 80 quid mark, you can go and buy a limited edition version, which is called Photoshop Elements. And that, again, is probably a bit more advanced than GIMP. It will take you up to enthusiast level. Then finally, you've got specialist pieces of software, such as Nixoft's Silver Effects Pro. This is their website. I don't actually have this software, but I have a few colleagues who work with it. All it does is work on black and whites. You can take really quite an ordinary looking black and white image, which you might have produced in Lightroom or Photoshop or just shot as a black and white in your camera. You can whop it into Silver Effects Pro and you can start to really work with it. You can duplicate uh, the look of different films. Look here on screen, you see the standard brightening if you can see, it looks a little bit kind of uninteresting, but when we go to the, the dynamic one, it, it looks a f fair bit more exciting. So these are just some of the different softwares. 
And hopefully this explains what this whole post-production thing is all about. It isn't something new, it's something that's been going on for ages. And one of the great things with digital is it puts all the power to create images looking precisely how you want them to look in your hands.